Good evening, everyone. Uh, since the time is now 7 o'clock, I'd like to call to order the spring annual Norton Town Meeting. Um, before we begin, I'd like you all to rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Yep. I'd like to take a quick moment uh, to welcome our new town moderator, Jack Conway, and not to be confused with the real estate agent. <laughs> She's stealing my jokes already. That's not good. <laughs> Thank you, Lucia. Uh, let's get going. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the annual town meeting. I am your new town moderator, Jack Conway, and this is obviously my first time up here. Please be gentle. Next to me is town clerk, Lucia Longhurst, who will be using a series of kicks to the shin and elbows to the ribs to keep me in line tonight. Um, I should probably be concerned that I saw her chugging a protein drink backstage. No? Okay. Um, also joining me on stage tonight are Bonnie Yezikevich and Paula Daniels, the chair and vice chair of the finance committee, respectively. Uh, we also have a special guest in attendance tonight. Uh, State Representative Jay Barrows is here. So thank you, Representative Barrows. Okay. Uh, with those introductions and pleasantries out of the way, I'd like to extend some gratitude to you all. Thank you for coming out tonight um, to participate in our town's legislative process. It is here tonight that you and your neighbors will make decisions that will guide Norton for the next fiscal year and beyond. The power is quite literally in the palm of your hand when you hold up that little barcode thing that they gave you when you came in. Uh, it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. So on behalf of your elected representatives and resident volunteers, thank you for caring and coming tonight. I promise to break out my daughter's joke book only during technical problems that we may have uh, during the night. Uh, which is why I brought two. So, um, Before we get into the delicious nitty-gritty of tonight's business, I need to review the ground rules for this meeting. Uh, I ask that everyone please find a seat for uh, the meeting tonight. Uh, standing in the back and on the sides creates problems, both on a noise level and in counting standing votes. So I think we are pretty good there. Uh, if you are not a registered voter in the town of Norton, you are welcome to attend, but must sit in the section of the seats over there. Hi, everybody. Uh, uh, your vote will not be counted if you are sitting in the non-voting section. If you wish to address this meeting, you must do so only after being recognized by the moderator. That's me. There are two microphones located in the back aisles for this purpose. The microphone down in front here will be used by town employees and presenters. Um, please move to one of the back mics if you would wish to speak and wait to be recognized. When speaking, please identify yourself by name and address for the record. Please try to keep your statements concise, direct, and limited only to the matter under consideration at the time. All speakers at this meeting will be treated with courtesy by the moderator and everyone else in this room. No speaker will be allowed to use the meeting for personal attacks on any individual. All remarks will be directed towards the moderator, and while I will allow questions to be asked of individuals, I will not allow cross-examination type discussions from the floor. In recognizing people to speak, I will endeavor to call upon those who have not yet spoken on a topic before recognizing those who have already spoken. I will recognize motions to move the question, but if in my opinion there are still people waiting to speak who may add to this discussion, I will exercise my authority to not accept the motion to move the question under those circumstances. If a standing vote is required, you'll be instructed to stand at your seats until your vote is counted. If a ballot vote is required, you'll be given instructions by the moderator and town clerk. In reality, it's gonna be all Lucia as to how to proceed. Uh, if you wish to make an amendment to any motion, you must do so in writing and present it to the moderator. Please prepare your amendment in writing and bring it up to me here. If you are moving an article that has not been recommended and moved by the Finance Committee, you must also present that motion to the town clerk in writing, and it must be done in a proper format. I remind you all that no motion to reconsider any article will be accepted by the moderator until at least three articles following that article being reconsidered have been acting, acted upon by this meeting. If the article is one of the last three on the warrant, I will accept any motions to reconsider them at any time prior to adjourning. Please be aware that any article you act upon tonight can be reconsidered as few as three articles later, so keep that in mind before you rush out after the one you care about. 
There may be a request this evening to allow non-voters to speak on certain articles. This must be done by a motion voted upon by this meeting. While it is the right and the decision of the meeting to allow or not allow non-residents to speak, please keep in mind that they may have information to add to the discussion. Uh, all non-voters must approach the moderator if they wish to be heard. Um, let me just do a quick vote. Um, please raise your hands if you uh, are in favor of allowing non-voters to speak this evening. Uh, the motion passes by unanimous vote. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, Madam Clerk, do we have a return of this warrant? Yes, Mr. Moderator. I have served this warrant by posting attested copies at Chatley Post Office, Norton Post Office, Norton Municipal Center, Norton Public Library, and three other public places within the limits of said town 14 days at least before the time of holding said meeting. Attest, Michael J. Mayer, Constable of Norton, April 27, 2023. Thank you very much. Uh, one last matter of business before we get started. Section 2-2 of the town, town Charter allows the moderator to designate a deputy moderator to serve between now and the next spring town meeting. The deputy can preside at town meetings should the elected moderator be unavailable. And while I have no intention of going anywhere, uh, it's always good to have a backup. So uh, the appointment of the deputy must be voted on by the members of town meeting. Um, to give former Mr. Moderator Bill Gavea uh, a bit of a break, I would like to nominate Amy Sawyer as deputy moderator and put it to a vote. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, and a second? Second. Excellent. Uh, all those in favor of Amy Sawyer being appointed as uh, deputy moderator for the next year, please raise your hand. All opposed? Um, passes by majority. Thank you very much. Article one. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to accept and enter into contracts for the expenditure of any funds allotted or to be allotted by the Commonwealth and or county for the construction, reconstruction, and improvement of town roads and to see if the town will raise an appropriate or appropriate and or appropriate and or transfer from available funds a sum of money for the purpose of road and other municipal improvements within the town of Norton, which are eligible for reimbursement, subject to conditions detailed by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, pursuant to General Law Chapter 90. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion on this article before we move to a vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of supporting Article 2 as written, please raise your hands. All opposed? Article 2 passes by unanimous vote. Thank you. Article 3. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $31,000 from free cash for tree services, including but not limited to the removal of hazardous trees, stump removal, and performance of additional preventative and emergency services townwide, including crane rentals and other incidental and related costs. Excellent. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion on this before we move to a vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving Article 3 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 3 passes by unanimous vote. Oh, majority vote. Um, Article 4. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that <clears throat> the town vote to transfer the amount of $206,893 from free cash, $10,810 from water enterprise receipts, and $1,922 from sewer enterprise receipts, as spe all as specified, to fund and implement the first year of the three-year collective bargaining agreements between the town and the following unions for the period beginning July 1st, 2023, and through June 30th, 2026, and to authorize the town accountant to allocate amounts to appropriate departments. Number one, from free cash, the sum of $20,196 for local 1702, State Council 93, American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO clerical employees. Number two, from free cash, the sum of $46,279 for local 1702, State Council 93, American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO Highway Department Employees. 
From water receipts, the sum of $10,290, and from sewer receipts, the sum of $1,922 for Local 1702, State Council 93, American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO, Water and Sewer Department Employees. From free cash, the sum of $38,600 for Norton Police Association, Mass Cop, Local Number 512. From free cash, the sum of $95,633 for Local 2678, International Association of Firefighters. And six, from free cash, the sum of $6,185, and from water receipts, the sum of $520 for United Steel, Paper and Forestry, Rubber, Manufacturing, Energy, Allied Industrial and Service Workers, International Union. AFL-CIO-CLC Local Union 9517 Unit 14, formerly known as Cena B. Second. Excellent. Any questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, approving Article <coughs> 4 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 4 passes by majority vote. Article 5. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the total amount of $4,740,548 be appropriated for the operation of the water enterprise for fiscal year 2024 from water enterprise receipts, including but not limited to user charges, lease revenue, interest, permits, anticipated receipts, and miscellaneous revenues, and the amount of $4,243,344, and by transferring from retained earnings the amount of $497,204, with $4,210,722 of said sum being appropriated hereunder for direct costs of the enterprise, and $529,826 of said sum to be appropriated in the general fund under Article 7 for indirect costs and allocated to the Water Enterprise Fund for funding as follows. $1,242,231 for personnel services, $1,347,500 other charges and expenditures, $1,620,991 debt services, $529,826 indirect costs charged to enterprise fund from general fund and raised under Article 7 for a total of $4,740,548 total for fiscal year 2024 water. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those uh, in favor of approving Article 5 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 5 passes by majority vote. Article 6. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the total amount of $2,351,071 be appropriated for the operation of the sewer enterprise for fiscal year 24 from sewer enterprise receipts, including but not limited to user charges, fees, charges, interest, permits, betterments, and miscellaneous revenues, in the amount of $2,247,214, and by transferring from retained earnings of the amount $20,657, and from the West Main Street Betterment account, the amount of $83,200, with $2,186,124 of said sum being appropriated hereunder for direct costs of the enterprise and $164,947 of said sum to be appropriated in the general fund under Article 7 for indirect costs and allocated to the sewer enterprise fund for funding as follows. $439,422 personnel services, $1,343,489 for other charges and expenditures, $403,213 for debt services, $164,947 for indirect costs, charged to the Enterprise Fund from General Fund and raised under Article 7, for total for fiscal year 2024 sewer of $2,351,071. Second. Any questions on this? Seeing none, we'll move to the vote. All those in favor of Article 6 as presented, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Article 6 passes by majority vote. Um, Article 7. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the total amount of $69,965,686 be appropriated for the fiscal year to fund the FY24 operating budget all is presented in the Finance Committee's report. 
to do so to raise and appropriate $66,233,154, to raise from water receipts $529,826, to raise from sewer receipts $164,947, and further to transfer $3,037,759 from the following funds for a total appropriation for the fiscal year 24 operating budget of $69,965,686. From the Hicks Fund, $200,000. From the Stabilization Fund, $707,500. From ambulance receipts, $850,000. From assessment overlay, $100,000. From septic betterments, $35,000. From the Dog Fund, $10,000. From the Debt Exclusion Premium, $11,218. From Wetlands Protection, $5,000. And from Free Cash, $1 million. $119,041 for a total transfer amount of $3,037,759. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on Article 7? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of Article 7 as presented, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Article 7 passes by majority vote. Uh, with the town being, uh, with the time being 7.15, oh, no. Pardon me? Oh, two-thirds. Yes. Uh, just to clarify, uh, Article 7 passes by a two-thirds majority vote as determined by the moderator. Thank you. Uh, with the time being 7.16, uh, we do have a special town meeting to get into. So at this time, I will recess the annual town meeting and call to order the special town meeting. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have a return on this warrant? Yes. Oh, got your best friends. You did. Yeah. Mr. Moderator, I have served this warrant by posting attested copies at Chatley Post Office, Norton Post Office, Norton Municipal Center, Norton Public Library, and three other public places within the limits of said town, 14 days at least before the time of holding said meeting. Attest, Michael J. Mayer, Constable of Norton. Date, April 27, 2023. Thank you very much. Article 1. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to pay the following unpaid bills incurred in the prior fiscal year using $395.20 from existing fiscal year 23 funds in account number 001-192-570. Municipal building for vendor citron hygiene in the amount of 395.20. Excellent. Second. Thank you. Uh, because this article deals with paying a prior year bill, it does require a nine-tenths vote in order to uh, be approved. So uh, if it's anything less than unanimous, we're gonna need to do a hand count. So just keep that in mind. Um, with that said, any questions on Article 1 of the special town meeting? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Article 9, uh, sorry, Article 1 passes by unanimous vote as determined by the moderator. Thank you. Article 2. Article 2. Article 2 is declared lost for lack of motion. Article 3. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to amend the vote taken under Article 6 of the June 7, 2022 annual town meeting by increasing appropriations for certain line items and to do so by transferring the additional amount of $126,682 from account number 001-910-511-511. 5171, as follows. Account 001-300, North Public Schools, Transportation, in the amount of $101,682. Account 001 940 Miscellaneous, for insurances, in the amount of $15,000. Account 001 Miscellaneous, for use towards Medicaid reimbursement, $10,000, for a total fiscal year operating budget supplement amount of $126,682. Sorry, $126, Second. Excellent. Thank you. Um, any questions on Article 3? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 3 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 3 passes by majority vote as determined by the moderator. Article 4. Article 4. Article 4 is declared lost for lack of a motion. 
Article 5. Article 5. Article 5 is also declared lost for lack of a motion. Article 6. Article 6. Article 6 is declared lost for lack of a motion. Article 7. Article 7. Article 7 is declared lost for lack of a motion. Article 8. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chase. I move that the town vote to transfer the amount of $85,000 from free cash for the purpose of replacing the traffic signal at Norton Fire Department Headquarters, Station 2, located at 70 East Main Street, including all other incidental and related costs. Second. So, any questions on Article 8? We'll go to the vote. All those in favor of Article 8 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 8 passes by majority vote as decided by the moderator. <clears throat> Article 9. Article 9. Article 9 is declared lost for lack of a motion. Article 10. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to transfer the amount of $25,000 from free cash for an engineering consultant to redesign, alter, and or relocate the layout of the intersection of Mansfield Avenue, Taunton Avenue, and Main Street in Norton, portions of which are state roadways. Second. Any questions on this one? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 10 as presented, please raise your hand. Oh, question. Uh, if you'd like to come down to one of the microphones, that would be great. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Bonnie, why? was the pony so quiet? Why, Jack? Because it was a little horse. <laughs> Can you get to the microphone faster <laughs> next time? Thank you. And performing tonight. <laughs> now, uh, Kim Arena, 8 Fordham Drive. My question on this is many, many years ago, I attended a state meeting talking about redesigning the intersection of the center of town. There were even sketches presented, all of that. And I'm talking probably 20 years ago. And nothing came of it. So now we're going to appropriate $25,000 <coughs> towards what? Okay. I mean, what guarantees do we have that there's going to be some sort of action taken on this? All right. uh, Mr. Town Manager? Oh, I see Mr. Kimball. Mr. Moderator, Bob Kimball, 51 Pine Street. I'm the chairman of the new tr safe traffic safety committee here in Norton. Uh, I'm familiar with the other reports uh, you just mentioned, and I will tell you that uh, the committee has researched them all. We brought them back, and we're using them as informational type of, uh, type of stuff. And we had a joint meeting with uh, our state reps and senators a few weeks ago to talk about what we need to do to, to improve that intersection. We're not exactly clear on what's going to happen. That will be done by the engineers and whoever else to program themselves for the center of town, whether it be go through the center of the existing town common or whether it go to the right of the church. We're not sure how the state will, will come up with that. The town is required to lay out and bound the actual prop, the uh, layout of the street itself. It's up to us to do the engineering work and all that. This first 25000 I will be honest with you, was probably the first installment of probably close to $200,000 by the time we're done. It's going to take a number of years to do it, but we will get it, on, uh, get it done. I will tell you also that I was pleasantly surprised by the turnout of both our state reps, senator's office, and others who attended, along with three people from Mass Highway DOT, to give us some input on, on what they envision what happens at this intersection. So, the long and short answer to this is we're asking for 25000 to get started. I can assure you that the tra Traffic Safety Committee is going to pursue this, and we're going to get some answers finally on what we can do to straighten out this mess in the center of our town. We've been talking about it for years. As a selectman, we talked about it forever and ever and ever. And we're, I think now we're going to finally get some answers. As we progress and as we go along, we'll determine whether or not the town wants to spend the money. But all we're going to be committed to and the whole process is about 200, I'd say up to $200,000, maybe a bit more. Once we've agreed to all that, 
the land takings, all the engineering, everything else beyond that uh, scope will be bear, uh, bared, uh, the cost will be bared upon the state itself. And the prediction, predicting on today's standards, it could cost between 12 and $16 million. So to answer your question, uh, we will stay on top of it. Okay, ultimately though, it's the state that will decide. And so as far as citizens go, if we're investing money, we ought to all be picking up the phone and talking to our state reps and everything to push this forward yes, as and quickly I, and as much as possible. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Kimball. Yes, and I would encourage you all to do that. I will tell you that state representatives are trying to work with the state right now to get us some more money. And we can work with our senators, and I've even thought that about going to the federal level to see if we can get some money from them too. But what's really neat about the whole process is once it's all, once we've done our share, everything else will be, cost, all the additional costs will be borne upon the, town, the state itself. Mass DOT will have to pay for it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Kimball. Oh, uh, Peter. Peter Wiggins, 157 Mansfield Avenue, Trail 43, Norton, Massachusetts, and Honorary Mayor Norton. And I'm all for it because I, I, I go by that intersection lots of times on my travels, my walks, and it can get very congested in the evening, rush hour, and I go by there. So it's about time to redesign the intersection. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any further questions on Article 10? Seeing none, we'll move to the vote. Uh, all those in favor of Article 10 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 10 passes by majority vote as determined by the moderator. Article 11. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to transfer the amount of $15,000 from free cash to supplement the vote taken under Article 13 of the October 19th, 2015 Annual Town Meeting for the engineering and design of the multipurpose recreational Norton Rail Trail project, including any incidental costs associated with the project. Second. So, any questions on Article 11? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 11 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 11 passes by majority vote, as determined by the moderator. Article 12. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation. One, to authorize the town treasurer per the town's cash and investment policy and in consultation with the select board to invest town of Norton trust funds in accordance with the prudent investor rule and sections three, four, five, eight, and nine of chapter 203C as set forth below. Two, to authorize the general court to make clerical or editorial changes of form only to the bill unless the select board approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court. And three, to authorize the select board to approve amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition as follows. An act authorizing certain investments by the treasurer of the town of Norton. Section one. Notwithstanding any general or special law to the contrary, the treasurer of the town of Norton is hereby authorized to invest any trust funds of the town in the custody of the treasurer in accordance with the prudent investor rule in sections three, four, five, eight, and nine of chapter 203C of the general laws and in accordance with the town of Norton cash and investment policy, as the same may be amended by the town of Norton acting by and through the select board from time to time. Section two, section 54 of chapter 44 of the general laws shall not apply to the town of Norton. Section three, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Second. Thank you. Any questions on article 12? Seeing none, we'll move to the vote. All in favor? Oh, yes. If you, if you could just go to the microphone, sir. Appreciate that. Say your name and address. <clears throat> Joe Cogliano, 202 Bay Road. Um, section 2, Section 54 of Chapter 44 of the General Law shall not apply to the town of Norton. I don't know what that means. What, what does that mean? Mr. Town Manager, or James? Who would like to explain that? Oh. Yes, yes, oh. <laughs> Someone else? Uh, 
Hey, I'm Paul Linares, the treasure collector in town. And what that section refers to is what we're currently working under, which is a legal list of um, equities and uh, securities that we can invest in, and they're very, very limited. There's only 22 stocks on that list. Um, and not even all the sectors are um, represented in that, so you're very limited to what you can invest in. What we'd like to do is what a typical prudent investor would do to engage in um, diversification so that we can m mitigate that kind of a risk. So you want to expand the, op the options for investment? Correct. Yes, beyond the 22 equities, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any additional questions? Seeing none, we'll move to the vote. All in favor of Article 12 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 12 passes by unanimous vote as determined by the moderator. And I believe that brings to a close our special meeting. So let's go back to our regular meeting. Uh, Article 8. Article 8. Article 8 is declared lost for lack of a motion. Me, Mr. Article Moderator. 9. Oh, Mr. Moderator. Sorry. Hold Stephen on a moment. Five McTee Drive. I'm just curious on Article 7, which is the normal budgets for all the town. I think normally we have the opportunity to go through each budget itself so we can review that instead of approving in bulk. Yes. And, I if, and be... if you wouldn't mind. Yep. The reason for the two thirds vote for the budget, if you could explain that a little bit to the town's folks. Sure. I don't know how we address that now, but. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, pardon me one second. Um, we need to make a motion to dissolve the special meeting. So moved. Second? Second. Um, all in favor of adjourning the special town meeting? Dissolving. Uh, okay. All opposed? Uh, that resolution passes by unanimous vote, as determined by the moderator. Okay, back to Article 7. So, thank you, Steve. I, uh, it's hard to see that screen up there. So, yeah, what we've done in years past is put up the budget and go page by page. Um, if anyone has any questions, please uh, do that. And... Uh, okay. This is, isn't this seven now? Yeah. So, um, it passes by two thirds. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, we did. Apparently, we went too fast. Huh? We probably did, but he can. Yeah. So, a bit of clarification. Uh, we have already. Uh, voted on Article 7, so we cannot go back to it until three articles from now. Um, so thank you, Chris, for attempting to do that. Um, but uh, somebody can please make a motion after Article 10, and we can bring this up. And I do apologize for missing the page-by-page -page budget piece. Thank you. Uh, I did Article 8. Article 9. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town appropriate the total sum of $1,064,788 for the purchase or lease for periods of time up to or in excess of three years with an option to purchase and equip the new and or replace capital items or for capital projects for various town departments and for the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto for the purposes and in the amount set forth in the finance committee's recommendations and in the chart entitled Article 9 proposed FY24 capital budget and to meet said appropriation to transfer $677,988 from the capital improvements account, $166,000 from the water enterprise retained earnings, $28,000 from the dog fund, and $192,800 from the ambulance reserve fund, all is printed under Article 9 of the May 15, 2023 annual town meeting warrant. Second. 
Thank you. Uh, Article 9 requires a two-thirds vote to pass because it deals with the capital improvements account. Sure. Uh, would you mind showing up the uh, capital improvements list? All right. Any questions on Article 9? Give you guys a minute to take a look. Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 9 as presented, please raise your hand. All opposed? Article 9 passes by two-thirds majority vote as determined by the moderator. Article 10. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to appropriate the sum of $375,000 for the engineering, planning, designing, permitting, and or constructing in-tank aeration systems at the ground storage tank located at Cottage Street to improve water quality and appurtenances, including legal, administrative, and all other incidental and related expenses associated with the project, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is hereby authorized to borrow such amount pursuant to General Law Chapter 44, Section 7 or 8, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the town, therefore, provided, however, that although these will be general obligation bonds of the town, bonds of the town, it is anticipated that they will be repaid from the water enterprise. Second. Thank you. Article 10 also requires a two-thirds vote. Any questions on Article 10? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 10 as presented, please raise your hand. All, all opposed? Article 10 passes by unanimous vote. Um, oh, by two-thirds vote, sorry. Um, uh, at this point, Steve, if you would like to uh, reconsider the budget article, we may do so. Mr. Moderator, Steve Evans, 5 McT Drive. I make a motion to reconsider Article 7, as well as explaining the need for a two-thirds vote on the funding sources. Excellent. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, uh, all those in favor of reconsidering Article 7 so that we can go page by page for the budget and uh, explain the two-thirds rule for that, please raise your hand. All opposed? Ooh, that's a close one. Yep. Uh, can we try that one more time? All in favor of reconsidering Article 7, please raise your hand. All opposed? Pretty, yeah. uh, I think we're going to move to a hand count here. So um, the way this will work is we'll just ask you to uh, stand at your seats uh, until you've been counted, and um, then we'll flip our people around. Hey, Bonnie. What, Jack? Why should you never tell a pig your secrets? Why, Jack? Because they love to squeal. I'm regretting so many life choices right now. <laughs> I believe most of the audience is as well. Dokey. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, the team is in place. So, all those in favor of reconsidering Article 7, which would allow us to reopen the discussion and go through the budget page by page, please stand.
think they're all set. I think they're all set. Are you all set? Mm, counters? Okay. Uh, please be seated. All those opposed to reconsidering Article 7, please stand. All right. That would have been easier the first time then. You may be seated and just give us a moment to tabulate the results. Uh, thank you for your patience with that. Uh, the motion to reconsider Article 7 has failed. Uh, 35 votes yes, 75 votes no. Thank you. Article 11. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to appropriate the sum of $900,000 for the engineering, test well drilling, designing, permitting, and or constructing of the replacement of drinking water wells and appurtenances including legal, administrative, and all other incidental and related expenses associated with the project, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is hereby authorized to borrow such amount pursuant to general law, chapter 44, section seven or eight, or any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds and notes of the town, therefore, provided further that, although these will be general obligation bonds of the town, it is anticipated that they will be repaid from the water enterprise. Second. Thank you. Article 11 requires a two-thirds vote. We have a member of the audience. I just have a question. Um, Tim Griffin, 169 John Scott Boulevard. I was under maybe a mis an impression that there was some federal money coming for new drinking wells. Is there just kind of breakdown of, is that correct? Is this in supplement? Is this our portion of a project? Just kind of a summary of what this is for. Mr. Town Manager? Hopefully there is money coming from uh, the congressman's office. Um, there is a match requirement, and also uh, there were some issues with um, engineering that wouldn't be covered that we thought would be covered. So um, the requirements now, and we there are requirements uh, that to be eligible for 80% of the funding, um, and we'll need to do the match 
to uh, get some of that funding. So hopefully there will be some money uh, from Congre the congressman, but right now we don't know when we'll receive that. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Any other questions on Article 11? Seeing none, all of those in favor of Article 11 as presented, please raise your hand. <coughs> Opposed? Article 11 passes by two-thirds majority vote. Article 12. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. Article 12 is not recommended by the Finance Committee by a vote of 0 to 11 in favor on May 10th, 2023. Okay. okay. Thank you. Article 13. Mr. Moderator. Oh, Mr. Kimball. I'd like to move Article 12. Okay. Robert Kimball, 51 Pine Street. I move to amend the general bylaws by inserting a new paragraph to read as follows. All town buildings and facilities, new and existing, shall be exempt from the payment of water and sewer tie-in related fees requ that requ are required. And further, to authorize the town clerk to assign appropriate numbering for these new provisions. Right. We have a motion to move Article 12 from the floor. Do we have a second? We have a second. Okay, uh, let's have some discussion on Article 12. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Kimball. So for those of you that understand how the process works, you just went through a number of articles about the enterprise account. The water and sewer department is an enterprise account. It's above, it's above and beyond your proposition two and a half. So it's outside of that budget. So what's happened over the years is the town has, um, for many years, has supplemented the budgets for most, mostly just the uh, sewer department. Once we, sat, once we had the uh, facilities built, we had to maintain it. We didn't want to have a major impact on the, uh, the users of the program. I will read a portion of the letter I asked when I, when I sent to the selectmen to, uh, to consider putting this on the warrant. Um, in the late 80s, the town was forced into constructing new sewer lines, first on East, the K Estates off of Newland Street, and again in the Norton Grove. The funding for these projects was put on the back of the taxpayers of Norton, <clears throat> not just the users, because the expense to build the infrastructure could not be paid by the users. The financial demand put on the strain on town uh, services was for many years. We're talking back in the 80s. So what happened was we had to build a facility, we had to build the infrastructure. Then after that, we had to pay to keep it, keep it going. And in order to do that, we had to supplement the budget the sewer budget for many years so that the, uh, the, the users of the, fee, of the uh, sewer would not have to pay, uh, pay the entire burden of the cost to do this. So I'll give you some examples. Um, <clears throat> prior to 2012, the town paid <clears throat> every, every year we had to pay for the, for the uh, uh, payroll and expenses of the sewer department. And in 2012, we made it an enterprise account. So in 2012, we took that burden from the taxpayers, put the burden on the users of the, uh, the system. So to give you some examples, beyond the millions of dollars we spent, we, the taxpayers, <clears throat> most of us not even using the facilities, because we, you know, we, if you don't have a sewer line in front of your house, you can't use it. Um, we continue to maintain, build, and run the system. To give you an example, just a couple, 1998, we spent $337,462. $1999, $460,866. $2,402,760. These are taxpayer dollars that we spent to subsidize the sewer program. In those years between 1998 and 2012, the taxpayers in this town spent over $11 million to subsidize the sewer program. We're asking for tonight, what we're asking for is some relief on having to pay connection fees for municipal buildings only. We have a new town hall. We have a new, uh, I'm gonna call it constant community building that we're going to be connecting the sewer pretty soon. 
in defense of the water sewer commissioners, they actually did waive those fees, but their reasoning for waiving it was because they waived $182,700. That's for the two buildings. That's what we're talking about in dollars. But it was as a gesture because we as a town waived the building fees for the new waste treatment facility. So one back scratches the other back, basically. What I'm suggesting tonight is we only have a number of town properties in town that will be affected by this police department, present town hall. Um, you've got the, um, the uh, let's see, you've got the Council on Aging building. You've got a couple of schools that are going to have to connect. You've got the uh, Norton uh, Historical Society. Those are the buildings we're talking about today. Doesn't mean in the future we won't build, say, a new fire station on the other side of town. We shouldn't have to be double dipping. We, the taxpayers, have spent all of this money over these years to subsidize this program, and we shouldn't have to pay fees to connect to something we've already paid for before. So what I'm asking for tonight is uh, the opportunity to waive these fees so that we don't have to pay it again. I think we've paid enough money over the years for the water sewer commissions to give us a break and not have to pay it through the enterprise account. So that's what I'm asking. So if you can, thank you for consideration, and I hope you can, uh, can give us some, uh, some opportunity here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kimball. Would anyone else like to speak on that? Sir. Uh, hi, Jim Jarden, 135 North Worcester Street. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a motion to change the language of this article by striking the words or related. I have that right here. Okay, if you could bring that up, please. Okay, we have a motion to change the language. Um, the proposed language would be to see if the town will vote to amend the general bylaws to expressly exempt all town buildings and facilities, new or existing, from the payment of water and sewer tie-in fee requirements or take any other action relative thereto. Now, the way this works is we have to discuss the motion to amend the language, and then we can go back to the real article. Uh, it's a bit like uh, Russian nesting dolls. Um, do we have any discussion on the amended language here? It's striking or related. Hmm? Oh, do we have a second? Sorry, we need a second if that's going to move forward. Oh, we have a couple. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, Jim Jarden, 135 North Worcester Street, and I'm actually a, a member of the Water Sewer Commission. Um, just real briefly, I don't really have a problem with this article. Everything that was said is correct. Uh, just these words, or related, we feel leaves the door open to interpreting this down the road to include usage fees, which would be a huge hit to the enterprise account. You're talking a lot of buildings, a lot of water. So it's just a simple change of the wording, and that's all we're really asking for that. Okay. So, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, sir. Any further discussion on the proposed amended language? Seeing none. Um, all those in favor of accepting, oh, you there? Sorry, Steve. That's right. Steve Hornsby, 66 Pine Street. Um, I just wanted to note that the, the select board did recommend five to zero to support this. Uh, and initially, FinCom did support this up until I think last week. So I just want to make that clear. Great. Okay. So the motion at hand. Uh, oh. One moment. Mr. Gavea. Mr. Moderator, could I just ask what the FinCon's basis for unanimously opposing it was? What were the reasons? Certainly. Madam Chair, could you explain sure. for the crowd? I believe the basis was for the vote was that the Water Department, or the Water Commission, excuse me, had voted to not charge for the tie-in fees for the two buildings, and that that was the spirit of what the article had been trying to achieve for these two buildings specifically. So in light of the fact that they had spoken to not charging at all, we felt that it wasn't necessary to put forth the article in full. It was just for those two buildings. OK. 
Okay, Mr. Moderator, could yes. I ask so that whether we vote yes or no on this article, there's not going to be any charges for these particular buildings that we're talking about. Is that correct? That is my understanding. If someone could someone from the water department could corroborate that, because I wasn't at their meeting, but okay. that was how it was relayed to us. Okay, I'm seeing okay. Steve. I, several. I, I I agree with Mr. Kimball's points and and the philosophy, but I. I would point out there's not going to be money spent. I'm a little leery about exempting things like this because the enterprise account is supposed to, I, I stress, supposed to reflect the cost of doing the things that it does. It's not supposed to collect more than it needs, and it's not supposed to collect less than it needs. It's supposed to be a true reflection of the actual cost of providing the service. And the idea that by not charging the town, you still are providing the service, you still are doing something that you would do for anyone else. So I'm just leery about voting to not let the cost and the revenues reflect the true cost of an enterprise account, because at that point, I'm not sure it becomes an enterprise account. I'm not necessarily opposed to the article, but I think we ought to be leery about doing this, especially when it has no, uh, you know, at least for now, it has no effect. Thank you. Um, Just a question. Have yes. we voted on the, um, uh, the article as amended yet or not? Not yet. Okay. So that's what we're you. trying we're to get back to. You. So before, uh, on the amendment, Chair? Um, Sherry Cohen, the chair of the Norton School Committee. I just want to be on record that the um, school committee did support this article as well. Okay. Um, gentleman in the back. Um, Frank Parker for Allen Drive. I'm also a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, I voted personally against this uh, when we reconsidered for the for the reasons that were mentioned. You know, initially when it was brought to us, the discussion was that. Um, the, in, the fees for the actual connection were going to be problematic, let's leave it at that. Um, and I think the initial vote we took was based on the understanding that those would need to be paid. Once it was revisited and we found out that they were going to be waived, I think for me personally, and I did bring this up at the meeting, the concern was the same as Mr. Mr. Jardins, and I hope I don't mess up your name, um, that it's very vaguely worded, uh, intentionally so, I think, uh, and could be um, could, could be uh, you know used in a way that wasn't necessarily in the spirit uh, of the way that it was written initially and interpreted differently than than what was originally presented. So, okay. speaking for myself personally, that's why I voted no uh, the second time around. Um, I, as I mentioned, I did kind of bring that up in the discussion. I can't speak for any of the other finance uh, committee members of why they did, but I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Just to remind everybody where we are, the matter at hand is the amended language proposed by Mr. Jordan. Um, so we can vote on that amendment language and then go back to discussing the merits of the article. So um, all those in favor of accepting the amended language as presented by Mr. Jardin's floor amendment, please raise your hand. Opposed? The amendment is uh, approved by a majority vote. So now we go back to debating the merits of Article 12. Ma'am. Uh, so uh, Patricia Gagden, 142 Godfrey Drive. If, if the, these fees are being waived, I mean, I don't know where, who's paying for them. Maybe I'm missing something here. The taxpayers, are, are we going to, we, do we individuals who use the water department, is it going to, who, who pays for this waiving of these fees? Where does the money come from? It doesn't come out of thin air. So, huh? Uh, I'm sorry. I, so it comes out of the, we're already, so in just, we, we are paying for it twice anyway, that your argument about it, that the taxpayers have already paid, we're going to be paying for it one way or the other. It doesn't really matter. Mr. Kimball, can you clarify? You know, <clears throat> what we're trying to do here is, because it's an enterprise account, they can raise whatever money they have to. It's all run, it's all run by fee. 
We taxpayers, we can't do that. We have a proposition two and a half we have, we have as guidelines. So we can't just raise things up and down and, and make it work. As an enterprise account, they can raise whatever money necessary to run the department. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to take the burden from us taxpayers that don't have sewerage having to pay again to make connection fees for a number of municipal buildings, whether it be schools, town halls, or whatever. The Water and Sewer Commission has, has been very generous in waiving the fees for the, uh, the new town hall and the new community building, but they could have gone further, and they could have put it in there that all municipal buildings would be waived. And that didn't happen, because there are other buildings that are going to be impacted by these, these additional fees. West Main Street has a new sewer line that runs from 250 West Main, which is a senior housing, all the way down to 120, 120, 120 West, all the way down to, uh, to Wheaton College and beyond, in front of my house on Pine Street, top of the hill to the interceptor. I don't, since I have a pressure line in front of my house, I can't connect to town, town sewage. It's not available to me. So what happens is if we waive these fees again, if these fees are waived, we're going to come back to you guys and say, we're putting in, we have to sell the, the or we have to lease the existing COA building on West Main Street. Town's going to do something with it. Either way, we're going to have to pay for it. And if we have to pay for it, we shouldn't have to pay for it out of tax dollar money. We should pay for it out of the rate that people are paying into the sewer program. And that's the way it should be. We shouldn't have to pay for it again. And that's the argument that, that I have about this whole, whole process. But if we, if we don't do this, then yes, when the schools want to make their connections to the new sewer line, they're going to pay all those fees. Well, who's going to pay for that? We are. We all are. We've already paid for it in my mind. We've, we've spent millions of dollars over the years building and maintaining this system. All we're asking for is a break. And we're not talking about a lot of money. It's $182,700 to connect the two new buildings that we're building, community building and a new town hall. You're talking hundreds of thousands, maybe, over many, many years. It's not going to happen all at once. It's just something that's going to gradually have to get fixed. I will tell you, as a member of the um, Norton Historical Society, we're going to have to connect to it. We're a private organization. We'll have to raise money to do it. We own, the town owns the, the property. They own the building. But we're going to have to pay for it. And it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do. So again, I would ask you to consider supporting this article. Right. Thanks, Mr. Silver. Keith Silver, 120 Plain Street. I'd like to move the question. There is someone behind you, uh, so I will allow that after this last person speaks. Valerie Cabral, 50 Mansfield Avenue. Um, as someone who is not tied into the sewer, um, I guess this is not an entirely rhetorical question, but aren't the town buildings the only buildings that technically I am involved in using the sewer in? Um, I understand that we're trying to avoid costing taxpayer money, but if these are public buildings, um, those of us who aren't hooked in to use them at our homes, this is like actually the only time that I think I'm kind of okay with my tax dollars going towards that. So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we had a uh, motion to move the question. Uh, at this point, uh, debate ends. Right. Let me move to the vote. So we will uh, move to the vote. Right. Oh. Uh, we will vote on the motion to move the question. So uh, all those in favor of moving the question and voting on Article 12, please raise your hand. Opposed? Article or the uh, motion to move the question has passed by, by two-thirds majority. Uh, we will now vote on Article 12 uh, with the amended language. Uh, all those in favor of Article 12, please raise your hand. Opposed? Okay. Uh, we'll just do that one more time. Uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. 
And opposed. Article 12 passes by majority vote, as determined by the moderator. Article 13. Article 13. Article 13 is declared lost for lack of a motion. Article 14. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to transfer the amount of $3,000 from free cash for the purpose of collecting and disposing of discarded items abandoned along the roadways and throughout the town that require special handling, including all other incidental and related costs. Second. Great. Any questions on Article 14? We'll move to the vote. All those in favor of Article 14 as presented? Opposed? Article 14 passes by majority vote. Article 15. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to transfer the amount of $10,000 from the Water Pollution Abatement Trust Program Reserve for appropriation account to support administrative costs of the Water Pollution Abatement Trust Program. Second. Any questions on Article 15? All those in favor of Article 15 as presented, please raise your hand. Opposed? Article 15 passes by majority vote. Article 16. Mr. Moderator. Madam Chair. I move that the town vote to amend the Norton Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 175, Article 13 of the General Code, Floodplain District, by inserting the underlying text and deleting the strike-through text and renumbering the various sections accordingly and reorganizing as shown in the corresponding informational parentheticals, all as printed under Article 16 of the May 15, 2023 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Thank you. Uh, we have Mr. Griffin from the Planning Board to speak on this. Yep, and um, I'm going to pull up a PowerPoint here, so I apologize that Jack's going to have time to make another joke again. Hey, Bonnie. <laughs> Tim, we're going to have words later. What, Jack? What do sharks eat with their peanut butter? What? Jellyfish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Okay. I think we're good. No um, more time. Okay. Again, everybody, I'm Tim Griffin. I'm the chair of the Norton Planning Board. Uh, the Planning Board voted unanimously to recommend this article to town meeting. Um, this is an update to Norton's floodplain management bylaw. Uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, FEMA is requiring our region to have an updated bylaw by the end of the year. Uh, so the bylaw text that you see on all of the following pages of your warrant uh, is based on a template provided by the state of Massachusetts, and it has already been pre-approved by FEMA officials. Um, and just as a note, as it says here, uh, this is just about Norton's floodplain bylaw uh, and has no impact whatsoever on the flood maps, which are determined by FEMA. Um, so the... They want it done by the end of the year. If we don't, then there is the possibility that Norton residents would lose their flood insurance premiums. So um, here is the Norton's flood, vo flood zone maps. And uh, 61 residents at last count had in town have flood insurance. Uh, so what has changed? Um, we've added definitions for a few items, updated dates, added non-compliance processes, and specified the floodplain administrator as the building commissioner. Uh, we're also now requiring flood elevation data uh, to be submitted with projects for subdivisions greater than five acres. Uh, we did discuss this bylaw at a pair of planning board meetings, taking in a few comments. Uh, I'll call out Joe Cogliano specifically for his input and suggestions. Um, there were a lot of discussions about making changes to the language at various points some of which may help it reduce flood insurance costs in the town. Uh, however, given that FEMA has already approved this language with the potential penalty that I mentioned already, uh, the board chose to bring forward the standard bylaw at this time and potentially bring forward a, a enhanced bylaw in the future. Uh, FEMA reclassifies its classifications for flood insurance every five years. The next one would be in 2025. Uh, so for flood insurance purposes, it doesn't make a difference whether we do it now, in the fall, or next year. 
Um, so if anyone would like to call out specific sections of the bylaw for discussion, we have them all on the following slides. Uh, but I'll stop talking for now and step back. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. I'll open the floor to questions. Um, I'd like to. Joe Cogliano, 202 Bay Road. Everything that uh, Mr. Griffin said, I think, was okay, except for the last part. <clears throat> there are a lot of issues with this bylaw. Now, I think we should approve it, but only with the understanding that it's going to be amended in the near term. And I'm talking maybe the fall, as early as the fall. Why do I say that? I've reviewed the bylaw in depth. There are a number of issues with it. Among the changes that we should be considering are whether we should make changes to lower the flood insurance premiums from Norton residents or the commuting community rating system. Right now, Norton gets a 5% reduction out of the 45% possible. Uh, Quincy's at 15%. There's a whole bunch of categories that have to be dealt with to get the credits to get that, but at least one of them involves the actual bylaw and how much restriction is used in the, uh, the floodplain district. We need to consider the 500-year flood under the federal flood risk management standards. These are coming into play now. HUD is reviewing them. This is going to increase the elevation of the base flood by two to three feet and also include, uh, increase its width. So that's something that needs to be discussed. We need to consider expansion of the definition of structure to include new uses. The uses here are basically just the walls of a house and tanks. We need to consider prohibitions in the flood plain or flood way. And we need to consider other changes or corrections to the article, including language involving the um, floodway encroachments provision that I think uh, creates a conflict and the potential for litigation because of the difference between special permits and um, uh, the ability to go into the floodway if you don't increase the water level. <clears throat> Tim didn't mention it, but this becomes a little bit hard to understand because the, flood, the floodplain is the, the extent of the 100-year flood. And then what happens is, under FEMA regulations, that floodplain is squeezed until you have a one-foot increase. That becomes your floodway. Now. I really don't think there's a good reason to be in the floodway since that's where the flooding definitely takes place. But there are some uses, especially agriculture, cranberries for example, where you're in the floodway. But the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that I understand why this is being presented tonight. If it wasn't for the FEMA requirement that something be done by the end of the year, I would be opposed to this but I, I sense the pressure that the board feels. But by the same token, it is my hope that uh, both myself and another Norton resident, Ed Capone, who's a former FEMA floodplain specialist, could work with the board to discuss some of these issues. Th this stuff is so important because it deals with your rights, your property rights. So I'm, I'm very concerned. I wanna be very careful about what we do with these zoning bylaws. So, you know, if the board is willing, I'd be very happy to, to work with them to try to review some of these things. And I think it'd be helpful, actually, to have some residents involved to give their input because it affects everybody. There's a lot of wet areas in this town. But, again, I understand the, the, uh, the planning board. These people are elected. I think they work hard. I've been to these two meetings on this. I, I think there's a sincere effort. But I think there was also a little bit of fear. They, they want, they're afraid that this won't get passed in October. It's got to be done by the end of the year, so they're moving it forward tonight. So I would say I will vote for this, but with the understanding that this is a two-step process. This is the first step. The second step is to go over some of these other issues that I think are very important and will be uh, for the future of this town. So what, what that all means is that you know, if the planning board isn't willing to do it with me, I might be putting forth an amendment to this in the fall. I hope they do it with me because I don't want this to be Joe's article. I want it to be, you know, working with the planning board and other members of the town because it's such a big deal. So, 
Anyway, I hope I explained that properly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colligan. Okay, any other questions? Or Tim, would you like to? Sure. Um, and by the way, I, I don't want to go over all the, the things that need to be changed, because that would take too long. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. Uh, Tim Griffin, Chair of the Planning Board. I'll just state that we look forward to talking with Mr. Cogliano again, and I would emphasize his point that we would love to have more people speak. We discussed this article at two meetings, and Joe was the only Norton resident who spoke. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further discussion on Article 16? Article 16 does require a two-thirds vote, so we will go to the vote. All those in favor of Article 16 as presented, please raise your hand. Opposed? Article 16 passes by two-thirds majority vote. Article 17. Article 17. Article 17 is declared lost for lack of a motion. Article 18. Article 18. Article 18 is declared lost for lack of a motion. And I believe that brings us to the end of our evening. Uh, do we make a motion to dissolve? You make a motion okay. to dissolve. So I would like to make a motion to dissolve the annual town meeting. Second. A lot of seconds out there. All those in favor of dissolving the annual town meeting, please raise your hand. Opposed? Nobody wants to stay? All right. Uh, the motion to dissolve is approved by majority vote. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night.